And here we are, yeah. Michelle. Yeah. Why are you so angry? I don't know. I mean, that's a fair answer. I can appreciate that. Um, so, uh, how are you, Michelle? You doing okay? I'm fine. I, it's awkward. You see, that's the thing with uh, with doing shows is like I we just actually talked about it, and now I'm asking you again. Yeah. How How are you? Which is yeah. uh, fine, I guess, is the answer you usually go with. I think. Yeah. So, well, I appreciate that. Um, we are here uh, streaming live, and um, I tried not to have a conniption fit over we, there were some technical issues right before mm-hmm. we started broadcasting i did something very heroic today yeah i delivered a piece of mail that was wrongfully wrongfully delivered to my home that's wrongfully re- that's really good of you i'm glad that you did that i like saying wrongfully instead of mistakenly because wrongfully sounds mm-hmm. really like cruel and, and, mm-hmm. and purposeful yeah. Um, no, somebody's mail just ended up coming into my um, mailbox, so I delivered it to their house um, while I was running errands. Um, oh, I know. So I had I was waiting to talk about this for a second, but Patty Stevens said I'm going to miss the show with a with a sad emoji. Well, mm-hmm. I and and yes, <laughs> I mean I'm, I'm going to miss doing it too. Um, the good news is we're not done doing a show together. We're, we're, we're doing a new show called Monthly Spooky over at my podcast, Weekly Spooky. And Monthly Spooky is a talk show that Michelle is kind enough to co-host with me that we're going to do every month. Um, it's going to fit our lifestyles a lot better to do the show once a month. I also think that the show will be more entertaining um, I mean, we already, there's an episode already out. If you haven't listened yet, you can go to weekly find the first episode of monthly spooky. You'll see a really awesome drawing of Michelle and I, which makes me chuckle every time I look at it, um, <laughs> that Michelle drew and, uh, you can listen to the first episode. It's an hour and a half long and we do all kinds of things. Like, uh, we goof around, we talk about news stories. We, we read, uh, you know, information about things that interest us as long as they're kind of in the spooky ish realm. And it's really, really fun. Um, This show is awkward. We're at like, I think this is episode 132. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm a little tired and I want to try something different. So we're moving on. You look so uncomfortable, Michelle. I'm fine. Is it the, is it baseline uncomfortable or is it, is it, you know, I think it's just baseline. It's just the normal amount. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> uh patty said i love the drawing saw it on facey space thank like you facey space actually i have not heard that one before i like that yeah we should just have a new social media platform called facey space maybe facey space can pop up in your comic when somebody's checking facey social space? media yeah facey space <laughs> so but yeah so um, it became obvious that I that the best thing to do was to change the format of the show, and it seemed like Monthly Spooky was the best way to go. You know, now uh, every month we'll do a cool show. It'll be, you know, a lot of fun. It'll be nice and planned, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I needed a change. Um, plus, Michelle, you know, candidly came to me and was like, look, we talk to each other enough. I don't know how much more of this I can take this friendship. And you were doing air quotes, you know, this friendship that I have to put up with. And I was like, Oh gosh, she's figured it out. She's figured out that she has autonomy. This is bad news for me. So, but, uh, but yeah, so we've had a, we've had a lot of fun. We, I mean, the podcast ended up being a really interesting thing. Thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic in particular. Mm -hmm. Um, if you look back and I will not be getting rid of the, the back catalog, it's going to stay live for a long time. So you can always listen back to the older episodes and, uh, you can hear, you can hear my emotional, uh, hills and valleys very loud and clear, uh, <laughs> throughout the show. So, uh, you know, what? What? you know, you know, you you've always said that I wasn't supposed to look at the the chats, and then yeah. you started looking at them and laughing at them. I was actually so, laughing at your face, at the face you were making. 
Oh, okay. You, you made fine. a face and I started laughing. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I, I'm just glad I corrected and didn't say I'm just laughing at your face. That's a little yeah. harsh. It's okay. It's I get it. <laughs> Uh, David DeNoyer commented and said, this show has helped me greatly during quarantine times and I'll miss it too, but enjoyed monthly spooky and looking forward to more. Michelle, is this the moment when we, we should announce daily spooky, the new daily no. podcast we're going to start? No. <laughs> I like to commit Michelle to things and then inform her later. I feel like that's the way to go. That's the yeah. way you get things done. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, Patty Stevens said, uh, a friend of mine has air quote tattoos on his on her fingers. That's that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. The like quotation mark, and I feel like that's something you you could pull off. Me? Yeah. You no. got cool tattoos, right? I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. So um, I don't want to make this like a big thing, a big uh, a big you know goodbye sad thing because we're just doing a new show. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not over here and it's not exactly the same show. It's actually going to have a degree of focus, which is bizarre and uh, uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> so, what, what were we going to say? I was going to say, is it uncomfortable no, to no, have focus? Not yeah. at all. It's actually, it was yeah. actually really nice. Um, but I will say, you know, I feel like I had a very successful run on the show with you. I cannot believe I actually found somebody who is a good enough of a, pal to sit down with me 130 sometimes and do a podcast and not miss a week for a hundred day or hundred weeks we yeah. didn't start missing weeks until uh until past episode 100 yeah so that's true and it was a it was a personal challenge i wanted because i wanted to conjure up a show every single week uh just out of thin air and some weeks it came easier than others there's no doubt mm -hmm. about it but uh it was a lot of fun uh, we have a comment from over on Twitch. Uh, Ostawain says, hi. Well, hello, Ostawain. Ostawain? Yeah, that's, that's that's how you say it. So, but Michelle, what have you been up to since last week? I don't know. Like, not anything, I guess. Well, didn't you inspect the house last week? I don't remember. Was that last week? Oh, my God. <laughs> this is this is the Michelle. The, this is who she really is. I mean, I guess I inspected, but I don't remember when that was. What day was that? I feel like it was a Thursday. No, I don't know when was that. I thought it was like it was like Tuesday, so I it wasn't it like might have been Tuesday. So it would have been before this, right? Maybe. Um, yeah, that was the place with the sandstone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, or the or the stone foundation that like crumbled into sand. Yeah, when you touch yeah. it. Which doesn't seem like the way to go. Yeah. Am I wrong? It seems like that's not the way you want it to go. No, no, it's not good. Probably. Probably. Yeah, probably. So, um, and you're waiting on, because you're in the process of getting ready to be able to home inspect in Philly, right? You're like working in, on it. Yeah. I'm in the process of trying to see if they will give me a license to inspect in Philly. So why does Philly require a license unlike the uh the the rest of um the rest of Pennsylvania? Is it just they're too important or so it's not even really like there's no anything else, like it's the same thing, but they need you know, as the rest of PA, like you have to be with a, you know, national society of home inspectors, basically. But you just have to apply separately to Philly and then pay them money every year. So, but then also, I don't know if the the thing that I'm the part of counts. So we're going to see because okay. I don't really want to join the other one because then that's tons more money yeah. a month. Um, so, so there's a pretty good chance I'll do all this if I can ever get that just like trying to get an activity license which is I can't even do right now for some reason um, and they're supposed to send me a postcard that has activation information so that they can prove that I live and or work where I am and they oh, have okay. to send it to me just to prove that you live yeah <laughs> prove that I'm alive um, so I have to wait for all these things and I if if 
I, so I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get a license the way things are, but it's taking a really long time to find out. So, yeah, I'm sorry that it's been such a pain. Thanks. Um, Austin Wayne said, I'm from, well, he's, it's, it's in, in English, it'd be Iran, but then he yeah. said it's pronounced Iran, which, uh, fair enough. Um, I'd never heard of it until today. Um, <laughs> Rob Fields uh, said, just read what the episode's about. Glad I could be here, quote, in person for your finale. It's been a great run. Thank you, Rob. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Jerry Roth. I actually was going to wait a second to answer the message. But when I clicked off the last one, I accidentally clicked up Jerry's. So, Jerry, you're getting answered. You're getting answered rapid pace. Uh, This show helped me a ton as well as you two are awesome together. And I love the randomness of the show. Hugs. Who can forget the Ring of Honor sidebar? Oh, yeah. I remember that. Um, we should have we should have just uh, compiled our favorite moments. I should have made you listen back to all 120 no. some episodes and pick no. all the highlights. No, that would have been terrible. Oh, that's exactly what I should have done. Henwolf is kicking me. Oh, thanks, Wolfie. She just kicked me right in the leg. <laughs> Sorry, she's napping next to the bed or next to the mm. desk, but she uh, she's not asleep. She just like oh, reared her just- foot back and gave me a kick. Wow. I guess I had it coming. Well, yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 I, 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 I deserve a swift kick every now and then. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. So, I, it. That's the thing with with the whole wrapping up. This show is awkward. Uh, is I wanted to move on, but I didn't want to stop doing a show with Michelle. So that's the truth. You just I actually really to do less show with Michelle. I'm okay. Let's do, let's do, um, let's make monthly spooky a daily thing. Then. No, no, I'm ready. I, let's I'm do sorry. it. I'm sorry. I take it back. Everything's fine. <laughs> I'm the one who keeps saying like, how about we do even more? And you're like, uh, hey, Wolf, stop kicking me. She is kicking the shit out of my foot. Why? I don't, I don't know. I guess she doesn't want my foot there. Well, I'm going to keep my feet over here away from her monster legs. So, um, but no, so yeah, uh, I wanted to keep doing a show, but I wanted to do something different and weekly spooky has been growing really quickly. And I wanted Mm -hmm. to put most of my podcast focus into weekly spooky. (gasps) Sure. Excuse me. Um, Craig Cohen, one of the biggest boosters of this show is awkward commented. Hey, Henrik and Michelle. Yes. I've always loved this show. You guys certainly, uh, you guys certainly helped us all feel better through the last few years. Uh, and they said, please have a once in a while. This show is awkward. Catch up edition once or twice a year. Um, well, first we could definitely do that. Yeah. Uh, if it, I, I mean, I just have to, you know, make Michelle do it, but we could definitely pop up and hang out every now and then there's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. So in fact, you know what, Let, Michelle, let's just do it every week. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they now? Every week. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't want this to be like, you know, uh, clickbait or like a kiss farewell tour where we're like, OK, well, we're coming back then. Um, uh, Jerry Roth said, uh, does Wolfie think you're Dave? Maybe, maybe. Uh, David Denoyer commented, this quarter is awkward. That's kind of funny. <laughs> it's Q2. Or, no, that, that, that was to be. So, Michelle. It's Q2. <laughs> Um, how are your mutual funds doing? Not good. Same. Um, same across the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, uh, we would be happy to pop back every now and then. I mean, we're, you know, and I still intend to do live streams and stuff like that. I'll probably stream games quite a bit. I haven't in a few weeks, but I've been honestly just too tired to play games. Aww. I know. Isn't that sad? It's really sad. I I've just been so worn out. There's so much going on uh, always. And we're growing weekly spooky a lot. M- uh, monthly spooky is only one new feature we're adding to the series we're, or to the channel. We're also adding um, episodes called terrifying and true, which may be one a month or two a month. We'll just have to see how the development goes, mm-hmm. but it's, it's pretty cool. It's an exciting time for sure. Um, but I remember I, w- I cannot tell you how happy I was when it hit me like a ton of bricks that I should, do monthly spooky with you because i've been thinking about doing some kind of a a month in review talk show 
to kind of add some more conversational material to weekly mm-hmm. spooky. And I was literally like, okay, but who would be whatever, you know, who'd work good on that with me and blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, well, Michelle, just get Michelle to do that instead. Um, and that way we can talk about sharks, which is really the number one reason that we're doing that stream is we talked about sharks very, very little on this show is awkward. Yeah. We really Far too did. little. Yeah. And sharks are both something that we love as we yeah. both really want to get eaten by sharks. It's it's a, it's been a personal goal since I was eight and a half years. Oh, sorry, eight and three quarters years old. Yeah, I understand. I I don't remember the first time I was like, man, I want a shark to just kill me. But you don't keep that in your in your diary, like. Oh, I don't have a diary anymore. So. Oh, what happened? It sounds like there was some kind of a horrible accident. Yeah, but I, we don't like to talk about it. Oh, it's one of those. Uh, okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. All right. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> uh, this week has been relatively easy. Um, still nervously waiting for Chicano's surgery, you know, which is at yeah. the end of the month. <sighs> and uh, he's doing all right. He's been chewing and licking at his uh, tumor a lot because we had to poke a hole in it. And it's, mm-hmm. but it's healing really nicely, yeah. um, which doesn't bring me any joy. Cause I want to get that cut off as soon as I can, but, um, but it's healing nicely. He seems okay. I discovered that he can. So we found out that he has arthritis. So I started giving him arthritis medicine for dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's made into a little meat treat and he has figured out how to not eat those in an entire yeah. bowl of kibble. I they literally look and are the exact same size as his kibble. I don't understand how he can figure out which one's which. He has a really good sense of smell though, remember probably. <laughs> and I but I mean I just am impressed he can't like it's not like he eats them one kibble at a time. You you'd think he although he does eat really slow. So there you go. So yeah. Uh but so I had to buy him glucosamine powder. So that I can sprinkle it on his food and then cover it with fish oil so that he can't not eat it. Wow. So uh, because of that whole mess, um, I have to give him a pill twice a day, two pills twice a day. Um, And it sucks because he's always been a stubborn eater and he'll just refuse to eat some days. Just no, because he doesn't like his dry food, even though he's been Mm -hmm. eating it for three years. He'll be That's like, no, he doesn't like it. Don't want it. I like, I wish that could be like Henwolf. Henwolf is so excited about the exact same bowl of dog food every day. Yeah. I would, I would kill, I would kill for it. Um, but, but no, um, I keep putting my foot on Henwolf's paw and I think I figured out why she kicks me. I think I've been bumping her and not realizing it. Oh, like, stop it. Kirk. Yeah. Kirk. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, what was I talking? <laughs> Lost my train of thought immediately. But it was like the, the powders and oh, oh yeah. Food. So so I got to slip him the glucosamine powder and hope he eats. Oh yeah. But uh, the problem is, some days he'd refuse to eat, and I'd be like, mm-hmm. "Well, then you don't get any treats or anything." That way, he'd be really hungry the next day. Mm-hmm. But because I have to give him these pills twice a day, he gets chunks of cheese no matter what he does. And it took oh. him very little time to figure that out. Yeah. Very little time to figure out that he can just not eat dinner and get two chunks of cheese. Can he just have the the treats in the cheese? Can you just They're get, too big. I uh, the cheese can chunks. You just give him like a really big chunk of cheese. Uh, the problem then I think he would just eat out the cheese yeah. and leave the yeah. mess. <laughs> He likes the little chunks of cheese so much. He just like his eyes get all wide and he just hoofs it down really fast. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, good. There were pills in there. Thank goodness. Um, so uh, Jerry Roth just commented in the chat and said, I have scary news. I'm about to watch Tales from the Crapper. Maybe you can make and maybe you can Ouija Burt Reynolds for the shark talk. Burt Reynolds. I don't know. I Well, first of all, best of luck watching Tales from the Crapper um, did, was I feel really dumb. Was Burt Reynolds in a shark movie? I don't remember it. I don't know. Dave will know. 
Uh, Rob Field said Chicano's been around you long enough and he knows how you work by now. No, you're totally right. He like he, he'll he'll totally be like, I've figured it out. Oh, Burt Reynolds was in the last shark. What what? Oh, 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 he's referencing Sharky's machine. Okay, I've not seen Sharky's machine. Hey, wait, the last shark. He wasn't in the last shark. That was the Italian movie. I am. This is we're getting off the rails already. Um, Jeff McClellan commented, you two talk so nonchalantly about being eaten by sharks, eaten by sharks. I feel like I like I'm getting drunk with Ernest Hemingway in a Cuban tavern. <laughs> yeah. Hemingway liked to talk very like, you know, about being murdered horribly, Aww. dying horribly. He would just talk about it like it was nothing. Yeah. Good for him. So. <laughs> That's one of my favorite um, like millennial and Gen Z uh, jokes is that bold of you to assume I don't want to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you do that you'll die bold of you to assume i want to live um but yeah yeah so um sharky's machine yeah i never saw that and now i feel like i must because i like burt reynolds what do you think of burt reynolds i think he's fine just fine yeah Oh, I mean, I thought he was pretty great. Um, I saw that movie. He did the last movie star. That was, I think, the last film he ever appeared in um, because he passed away shortly after it came out. Oh, and it was really good. Really heart wrenching, um, but really good. So uh, David Denoyer said Sharky's Machine. Uh, it's not great, LOL, but watchable. Oh, see, man, this is getting crazy. Jeff McClellan said Bert did a film called Shark in 1969. Okay, okay. Yeah, I just never saw it. I never saw it. That's so odd. You'd think I'd see all the shark movies. I, yeah. I, I have. I may not have seen all of the shark movies, but I've definitely seen all of the shark movies in which they are a tornado. Okay. So those are the important ones. Right? You're, you're damn right they are. You know the Sharknado series is the only film series ever to surprise me every movie. Really. Like I, I, for real, like the moment you start watching, you know, Sharknado and then you're into like Sharknado three or Sharknado four, you'll, you'll be like, um, watching it and you'll be like, ah, I pretty much figured it out now. Like the sharks are flying around and it's all ridiculous. And then you'll be like, oh, okay. So that's, um, Geraldo Rivera and he's flying a giant airship. Okay. <laughs> like, no, but really that was the thing that happened in one of the later sequels or like, you'll be like, okay, I've kind of figured this out. They're making it like that. And you're like, oh, now there's time travel. Uh, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, sharks flying around in, in a tornado and like messing, destroying stuff makes absolutely no sense at all. So why not just whatever you want, you know, mm, time travel. I mean, yeah, but they also like try really hard to get it to all fit, to get it well, all to, to, to make some semblance of sense. Oh, and Jeff McClellan said that shark we're talking about. That's a Sam Fuller movie shark. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard of it, but I have not seen it. Um, uh, Jerry Roth said, thank you, uh, Jeff. That's what I was thinking of. Um, Craig Cohen said that beginning of jaws, the revenge, the beginning of jaws, the revenge scene you mentioned on monthly spooky stuck with me too, Henrik. He survived all those other movies. And then jaws finally got him. Ta -da! Yay. Uh, Jerry Roth said, I was shocked when Brenda showed up in Sharknado. Brenda? Why do I feel like... I, man, I'm slacking today. I'm just like not following along with anything. Also, okay. my phone rang and I was worried it was the vet, but it's not. So yeah. I, don't, I wanted to pull a Michelle and be like, sorry, I have to take this. Everybody wait on me. Sorry. Oh, that's been like... That's the best. It was watching Michelle go uh, big time on this. I feel like that's why I have to leave the uh, the entire run of the show up. So people can mm -hmm. see your evolution to like big time business person. Oh yeah. Big time business person. Yep. I think that in another two years, you'll pretty much just be a, uh, you'll just be like a villain from captain planet. Just one of those nondescript, super rich business people who only hurts the planet, but there's no explanation for how it would be financially solvent to do so. Yeah, but, but it's gotta. just what you do. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you're like, ah, I don't. I'll destroy all of these forests because I love money. But how does it make you money? <laughs> money. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're financed by who was one of the richest men in the world. Anyway, um, let's see. Uh, 
Rob Field said, uh, still got to watch Jaws the Revenge, maybe tonight. Wait, Rob, have you never seen Jaws the Re- I know Michelle hasn't seen Jaws the Revenge because yeah. she lives to hurt my feelings. Yeah. She I loves even, to harm me. I, I mean, I felt I, like I should see the other Jaws movies first, and then I didn't see those. So I You've never seen the first Jaws? I've seen parts of it. I don't think I've seen it all the way through, but I know what happens. What like, happens? Wait, no, this is exciting. Okay, Michelle, as told no. by Michelle, what happens in Jaws? <laughs> no, no, there's like a shark and it's like really mean and it eats people. And then they gotta like kill it. And then they like take a thing and they're on a boat and they like put it at the shark and then it like, exp- I don't know. <laughs> that was pretty good. You forgot the part where he says, smile, you son of up," and then it booms when he would say bitch. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I I mean, Jaws is a great flick. I, I can't believe you need to sit down and just watch Jaws. I think you'd be surprised how much you'd enjoy it. Oh, no. Okay. I'm sorry it's not an anime, but it's still good. I know, I know. Your, your weeb, the power in, of weeb is strong in this one. Um, Are You Game said, hey, howdy. Hey, man. Good to see you. Uh, Rob Fields commented, I have the set with 2, 3, and Revenge, but I've never seen Revenge. Our group was supposed to do a watch party, but we've never done it. Ooh. And Jerry pointed out what I point out. My favorite thing about Jaws the Revenge is this time it's personal. But it's about a shark. Uh, are you game said Jaws Revenge was the first Jaws I saw in the theater without my parents. It was the one I saw on cable first. That just mortified me. Uh, and Jaws the Revenge has so many problems in it that it is the best movie ever. It's I know you love it. I love it so much. Not because it's good. It's not good. It's poorly written. It's, it's a bad movie, but it's unbelievably entertaining. It's no, like that movie wastes no time making you amused. Like by being weird and odd and, and making strange choices. And also the original script had an entire voodoo subplot they removed. So there's just weird inklings of like this voodoo subplot that never happens. That's yeah. So uh, Jerry Roth asked jaws or alligator. Well, alligator is the better movie. Uh, wait, wait, do you mean Jaws 1 or Jaws the Revenge? Because I'm only talking about Jaws the Revenge right now. Um, if it was Jaws, the film Jaws versus the film Alligator, Jaws would win. But it'd be a tight, tight game. Alligator's pretty damn good. Uh, David Denoyer said it held up better on your birthday watch than I remembered. Oh, yeah. Last year on my birthday, I made everybody watch Jaws the Revenge because I'm not a good friend. It's the truth. It's your birthday. Yeah. So if I want to hurt people, I can. Yeah. Um, Rob Fields said on the silver sc- screen I've only ever seen Jaws, Shark Exorcist and Shark Knight 3D wow I, you're one of the few people to say they saw Shark Exorcist um, Are You Game said the shark roars and Michael Caine falls in the water but then comes out dry and then uh, Alligator is a very good film is, oh, uh, is yeah Alligator yeah. is a very good film um, so there's more even more problems than that Michael Caine falls into the water and then at one point they reshot so much of Jaws the Revenge that at one point he falls in the water and when he's climbing back out, if you look really close, you can see that the clothes he's wearing are blue because they had to dye the water in the tanks they were reshooting at because they were trying to match it to the Bahamas, which mm-hmm. has that crazy blue water. Mm-hmm. So so that's one of the reasons he ends up dry Like every time he gets out of the water is because when his clothes got wet, they turned blue. So they would have to swap his clothes out. Why didn't they just have him like wear some dark color, like black or something? Because originally they weren't going to have to do reshoots in a tank full of water with food dye in it. Yeah. Because they thought they were going to get it right the first time. And the shark literally does roar like a lion when it jumps out of the water. It roars, which is amazing. There's so much to love about Jaws the Revenge. I think this year for my birthday, we're watching Jaws the Revenge twice. Wow. Just one after the other. Um, wow. There's a part where the shark, um, spoiler alert, when the shark explodes, if you frame by frame it on your Blu-ray or DVD, you can literally see that it's a little clay 
shark and literally like a firecracker goes off under it. Like it literally, I'm not saying like that. It's like, that. I mean, I think it is exactly what they did. Wow. It's so, so ridiculous. I, I love it so much. I, but like I said, see, this is my point about it being nonstop entertainment value. It's not that it's great, but it is like, there is a reason to watch every scene. And then when you start to think like, I don't know, this movie's kind of dumb. Then there's a love scene in a metalworking shop. Like it wow. just keeps, it just keeps, it's the gift that keeps on giving. That's the truth. Um, Jerry Roth said, Jaws the Revenge versus Alligator versus Piranha 2, the spawning. Well, <clears throat> Of those movies, Alligator is probably the best film. Piranha 2, The Spawning, is not very good. That is James Cameron's first film as a director, though. Wow. He did it for Roger Corman and uh, and basically d- disowned it afterward. Uh, <laughs> Rob Field says, um, Shark Exorcist was part of a 24-hour wild-eye mar- marathon in Columbus before COVID. That makes sense. Uh, the Sea of Madness commented, my buddy Keith, he said, I thought the blue was the chemical they put in public pools to show if someone pees. Well, that's a good point. You know, I don't, I don't believe that there was ever actually a chemical that did that. I believe they just told you that so that you would believe everyone would know if you peed. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Alan Holloway said alligator. So that's one vote for alligator. Are we going to say something about the chemical that shows your pee? I don't want to. I changed my mind. Oh, man. Methylene blue is often sold at pet stores as it is a treatment for tropical fish diseases. Now, the interesting thing about methylene blue is that if ingested, it can change the color of your urine. Okay, so. um, I would assume it would make it blue. Yeah. Uh, The swimming pool chemical that turns pee blue in grownups is a myth, right? Uh, it looks like it is a myth. Is it? I yeah, mean, it's an I, urban I, legend. According to Vulture.com, who asked the pool man, which was a guy who runs PoolInfo.com, he said that's an urban legend. So, I mean, I, I had never even heard about it until I saw it. There was like something on one of like a kid's show where they yeah. had it so i didn't like i've never i never thought it was like in a pool that i ever was in oh i was i sw- the 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 pool back when i lived in the rougher part of town we had a public pool they mm-hmm. told us that the pool had a chemical in it that would turn your pee uh, a different color well that's mean i think they just didn't want us to pee in the pool well there's there were people peeing in it regardless who knew that there wasn't <laughs> a thing you know oh i i believe you you're such a rebel. Let's all remember that Michelle peed in the pool. Um, I, I probably didn't. So, <laughs> uh, speaking of pools, Alan Holloway said this: the pool that the pool scene gave me childhood trauma. He's talking about alligator. There's a okay. really scary scene where the alligator's in a swimming pool. That would um, be upsetting. Yeah, uh, David Denoyer said they did a gag with it in Grown Ups. And then Jerry Roth said the water would turn yellow if you pee in the pool. It's not a chemical. I. Uh, have never done that, and that was a baby Ruth. I swear. <laughs> well, that's. Have you ever heard that old prank where you throw you throw a melted candy bar in the pool? It makes everybody get out, have to get out because they think it's a poop. No. Oh man, you 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 were sheltered. No, it's just like if there was a poop, no one was going to say anything, and we're just <laughs> going to pretend we didn't. Wow. Okay, that's hardcore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sea of Madness commented, "It's not a myth if you eat enough blueberries." <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's fair and then he also said they get more mad if you pee in the pool without being in the pool that's one of my favorite i've always thought about that joke where it's like no peeing in the pool and it's just some guy standing next to the pool like oh man <laughs> so you gotta at least be in it to make it vaguely culturally uh acceptable mm-hmm. you can't just stand next to the swimming pool pool kids are playing and just just shoot a stream right into it um <laughs> Uh, Rob said, welcome to the ool. Notice there is no pee in it. Please keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, that's that's funny. I mean, knowing what I know now about swimming pools, thanks to my hot tub, um, I cannot imagine the amount of chlorine it would take to keep a pool clean with that many people coming in and out that you don't know 
where they came from or how dirty or clean they are and all that mm-hmm. stuff like it would require an immense amount of chlorine yeah and, and care yeah and the thing is care that's that's the scary part well it's funny because i do always remember whenever i was in a public pool i do remember like it, the chlorine would burn my eyes a little bit and like it was really strong smelling but then if i'd go to like a person's pool it wouldn't be so bad which makes sense because in the public pool they're probably just like screw it and just pouring a ass load of chlorine in because children are filthy little mongrels what um so uh oh i'm not sure if chlorine can burn your eyes but i know that another thing that burns people eyes in in pools is the bacteria <laughs> are you trying to say i i got a brain eating amoeba no probably not it, but you probably know by now <laughs> well you and i both share that fear yeah the idea of getting into a big big freshwater pool I, I literally, every movie I watch, if somebody's in like a pond or a lake or whatever, and they dunk their head under when they come back, I'm like, you have a brain eating amoeba now. Yeah. Um, huh. Chlorine does not give swimmers red eyes. I know. Oh, no. It was pee in the pool. I knew it. Oh right, it's the it's the it's the interaction between Yeah, and yeah, I remember now. Oh. Yeah. Oh, actually, it's not just the P. That's like but, that's like an adorable way to put it. I should have thought about this, but I didn't. Uh mm-hmm. it's not it, it what can it's not a ton of chlorine making your eyes burn. Right. But if you overchlorinate a pool and it throws mm-hmm. the pH balance off, that will burn your eyes. Okay. That's what it actually is. So now we know that it's P. Mm-hmm. It's P. Uh, Jerry Roth commented, last public pool I was in was at was black. The hot tub was darker black. Turns out no one cleaned it. Ew. Ever? It's like, like, like what part of it was black? Like the water? <laughs> Because, well, because if it's the the surrounding area, it would have to be it would have to have so much algae that it stopped being green and turned black, which is, or I believe color. that could happen, but that's heinous. Yeah. Eesh. So, gosh, um, no. well, uh, it, the uh, water was black. That, that's that's no, dangerous. No one that's has bad. ever cleaned it. That is how you get a brain eating amoeba. Definitely, that's, uh, a thousand percent how you get a brain eating amoeba. David Neuer said, that's gross. I I don't know what part, but yes, he's right. (laughs) He's absolutely positively right. Ew. Um, Gross. Super gross. Okay, anyway. (laughs) Now I'm just thinking about all the gross public pools. Well, the one public pool was really the one I I was ever in. But it was... uh, it's pretty gross. I always find pools really gross. Not even just because people like pee in them and stuff. Just like because <laughs> they get things in them like leaves and things and band aids. And I don't like that. And I don't want to touch any of that stuff in the pool. And every time I go in a pool, <laughs> I'm like so uncomfortable because I don't want to touch <laughs> the little floaty things and the things and the little oil on the surface of the water and oh like oh, but the band-aids just want to be your friends oh. they care about you oh. they want you to eat them oh i don't think that they're <laughs> food Ugh. Um, jerry roth said uh and remember a hotel in ohio somehow screwed up the pool water with sewage water <laughs> I don't know. How would you, how would that, yeah. How would that even happen? Maybe you fill a pool with like a hose. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know how you do that. Like I know a little bit about pools because I took a pool inspection course. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh Oh, big brain Michelle coming at you. (laughs) I mean, I, I guess, I don't know. What? I don't know. I mean, 
I, I don't know if I mean I guess it's possible. I just it would it would take some like talent and maybe like a <laughs> sewage backup or something, I guess. Yeah, a major sewage backup. Uh Jerry Roth said at the water park portion of a hotel. Ugh. Um, Rob Field said the only pool I have ever had issues with was the school pool at my former junior high. We'd always have to skim it for scum before getting in. Now that's gross. Yeah. Are uh, you game said wrong water truck showed up to fill it. <laughs> <laughs> the sewage and, truck. Yeah. <laughs> and then they start spraying like, wait, that isn't water. And the guy's like, my only, my only job is to deliver it. Uh, I don't know what it is or why you want a swimming pool full of sewage or why we deliver sewage in the first place. But uh, I'm, but the customer is always right. So here's your murky poo water. God, it's so gross. I never want, I never want to get in a swimming pool ever again. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, it's okay. I, uh, cause I'm already with my little inflatable hot tub. I'm already like meticulous with cleaning it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but it's not that hard. I'm the only person that really gets in it. Yeah. So like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty careful. Like if I didn't shower right before I got in it, I'll premature or preemptively put in more bromine and stuff. Like, cause I know, oh, well this is going to make the bromine eat up faster. Cause I'm being lazy and not rinsing off first. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes sense. Oh gosh, Jerry Roth said the lines got crossed. I was to crossed. I was told about it uh, day two of Horror Hound for high school. The ceiling tile fell in while we were in the pool. <laughs> Fair enough. Jeez. Uh, Craig Cohen, I'm thinking of the pool in Poltergeist that was never finished. They took a swim in it anyway. Mm. I love that scene. Mm -hmm. You you've seen scene. Poltergeist, right? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, they didn't move the bodies. Um, <laughs> see Amanda said bad news it's sewage good news I'm saving two cents a gallon <laughs> I mean it's got filters it'll be fine just give it like 45 minutes yeah. and then you all get in then you all just jump right in ew um, so <laughs> God. yeah maybe I will never get in a pool I'm already like I really am horrible about um, ponds and lakes I really do like I'm just like, oh, God, if it touches my mouth, I should just die like forever unclean. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Like, I, I I don't mind like my feet or legs going in water that I don't know what it is as long as I don't like cut myself and then get some sort of horrible infection. Um, so what you're saying is like if you put your feet in water, you're like you confirm the water is clean and then start cutting yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but like, I don't want like my hair and my like head face. Stuff. Yeah. Your, your head stuff. <laughs> don't want my head stuff in there. That's fair. Fair. Uh, ew. Um, Rob Field said only time I've ever seen part of a ceiling fall was what, uh, while seeing the night of the living dead, 1990 remake in a theater opening weekend. It was so scary. It didn't blow the roof off, but it, it was roof adjacent. It, it, yeah. Jerry Roth said, that's not cranberry sauce. And then Keith made a really good point. Lakes are where fish poop. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Uh, so I guess the only thing left to do, Michelle, is when we do bounce back and do like a, another little check in hangout live stream down the road someday. I guess we got to do it from in like a body of fresh water. No. We got to confront our fears. No. Can we, can we just go in the ocean? No. The ocean's too clean. Oh. What, we could go in the gross ocean. We can find one of the places where it's like, there's sewage in this ocean right now. <laughs> the, so, the grocian. Yeah. The gross ocean. Uh, no, I think it needs to be fresh water. Oh, can we do, can we do a stream at least? <laughs> It will be a live stream of us in a very small <laughs> pond that <ne> <laughs> with so with brain eating amoeba warning signs no, on the shore. No. If I have to die of a brain eating amoeba, so do you. No, 
I that's don't... the rule. That's we made that promise to each other. But I you didn't remember. think we'd have to actually do it. I wouldn't have made the promise if I thought it was really a promise. I just thought we were talking. That's harsh. You just that was just pillow talk, baby. Yeah. I didn't mean any of that. <laughs> you know um, that like my okay. my grandfather got some sort of thing from swimming in a lake in World War II. And he had to be, he got, he had, he had like the first, he was like the first person to ever have his inner ear removed. Uh, so he couldn't get where, water. Where, where in, did this happen? In where, in somewhere in Europe. Or maybe World, no, I think it was World War II. I don't know. In somewhere in Europe, he was like, they were over there and they took a swim in like a lake and he got something, something from it. And then. Like he was discharged, so he didn't really have to do anything, but because he was all messed up. And then they did surgery; they operated on his ear and they took out his inner ear. Are you sure he wasn't just making this up no. to get out of serving? I mean, maybe, but it worked. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't shame his game. Yeah, but no, he couldn't. Like for the rest of his life, he had to be really careful not to get water in his ear. Yeah, because he could get it in his his brain stuff. His <laughs> Uh, uh, fair enough. Jeez. Yeah. Um, are you game said, I remember one of my best friends in junior high moved to a big house with a pool and we tossed people in and got tossed in before it was ever cleaned after setting uncleaned for a few years. Ew. That's really, really gross. Oh God. Oh God. Long story short, we found dead animals in it once it was cleaned. I of mean, it's been did. years. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Did. Yeah. I if I don't use my hot tub for a few days, the first thing I do is check it for dead bugs. Sure. Because bugs like really want in there, even though it's difficult to get in and it just kills them. Yeah. They just love to die, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Um <laughs> Rob Field said wastewater treatment plants, Michelle. I don't know exactly what that was in reference to, but it's Is fair. That where we're going to we're gonna swim? Water. Yeah. Okay, so I'm actually fine with that. I just don't want to go to somewhere that's like a lake so well it's gonna be like a man-made lake okay full of poo it's all i i know all about what wastewater treatment it all settles to the <laughs> bottom and it goes to a new place so well, we can do it sure okay all yeah. right that's a contract or could we, could we just go in a sewer instead now we're just it's becoming the movie alligator very quickly <laughs> uh, jerry roth said then you can pee in it and no one would know don't cross this. Just don't cross the streams. <laughs> Fair. Uh, David Denoyer said this conversation has been as gross as I feel inside. While David usually feels gross inside, he is sick right now. So get well oh, soon, David, or sorry. don't. You're an adult. You do what you want. Um, <laughs> oh, see, Amanda said you could float on the Dead Sea. That's true. Okay. It's very salty. Yeah. And salt. Um, Salt's good. So Yeah, salt keeps things clean. Um, you can actually get saltwater swimming pools. Did you know that? I did know that because my dad had one. Yeah. Oh, he had a saltwater swimming pool when he was in Florida? Yeah, I think. The one that kept leaking and he was always really mad about it? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. The bad one. Nice. <laughs> the bad one. Uh, Rob Field said, that's scary, Dave. And then Jerry, Jerry Roth said, David, like a Taco Bell bean burrito. Hey, don't you talk bad about my bean burrito love. Rob Field said, yeah, wastewater treatment plants got those big pools of, well, <laughs> I mean, I don't live super far from sewage treatment plant. So, and um, I live somewhat near a river that if you get a really, really like uh, if it's really bad and there's a good wind, you can smell it from over here, but it's not common mm -hmm. um, because I'm pretty far away. But every now and then I'll get out of the car and just be like, oh, river. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the smell of all the decay. You know, that's that's really it. It's just all that decay. Yeah. Because there's just tons of dead things floating in it. Uh, Jerry Roth said, this has been way more entertaining than Tales from the Crapper. Showgirls 2 Pennies from Heaven is better than Tales from the Crapper. That's harsh, but I think it's fair. So... 
But uh, yeah, yeah, I don't. I, 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 this I can't believe that things turn so gross. What? what At least no about? one's ever gonna want to listen to us again. So it worked <laughs> out. We're 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 burning the bridge as we leave. You yeah. know, we're, we're we're salting the earth to make sure that no one would be so foolish as to listen to us talk to each other ever again. Yeah. That being said, at the end of every month, make sure to go to <laughs> weeklyspooky.com. Subscribe to Weekly Spooky. At the end of every month, you'll see a brand new episode of Monthly Spooky featuring Michelle and I doing a somewhat spooky uh, talk show. A little bit, little paranormal theme, a little uh, scary yada yada. And uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Well, it is. I mean, the first episode's out now, so you guys can listen to it as soon as you want. Yeah. Um, so like Jerry Roth just said, I will miss you, you both. Thank you. I do appreciate you listening. Yeah, Definitely check out the new show. I think you'll, I mean, it's, it's very similar to this, um, but a little bit more focused and a little bit spookier. So, and I'm working on getting Michelle to agree to commit to doing six days a week and twice on Sunday. <laughs> so, um, Hey man, if, if you want to pay me that I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll take that as a full-time job, sure, or a part-time job or whatever <laughs> kind of job. Oh no. Don't make don't don't be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. No, I won't. I I got I okay, I got twenty-one dollars. For forever? <laughs> well, if that'll work, then yes. No. No. Oh, damn Sorry. It. Damn it. <sighs> you win this round, Michelle. You win this round. Uh, my buddy Keith said, I blame myself for turning things gross. So proud. Um, and then Rob Field said, maybe it was a bridge over the Cuyahoga River the time it caught on fire. That is true. Uh, that's one of my favorite jokes about Cleveland is like, well, there was the time the river caught on fire. Uh, <laughs> so it was due to pollution. Yeah. You were wondering. I figured. <laughs> so, but uh, I suppose it's time to wrap things up. Um, we call it a day so Michelle can go back to her very important business people stuff and I can go, um, complain cause it's super hot here today. Mm -hmm. Um, but I might still go outside and play with my new weed eater because I have a new weed eater and I want to play with it and test it out. Yeah. So, but I want to say a heartfelt and sincere thank you to everybody who listened every week. There were not a ton of you, but you were all really awesome and funny and thoughtful. And I really just really, really hope you guys join us over at weekly spooky. Yeah. Um, if you're not into the scary stories, you could just come for the, you know, the talk show episodes and I would love to have you there. And Michelle would probably too. Y yeah, maybe. So to keep with tradition, um, when Craig Cohen just commented, said, uh, thank you and good luck with monthly scoop spooky. And Rob Field said, listened to every episode from week one. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Craig. So to end things consistently, I'm going to, of course, give Michelle the last word by herself. Um, damn, I, I can't think of a good last word. How about just stocks? And then I go like this and then that's it. Uh, Michelle is not a stockbroker and is not suggesting that you purchase anything that she may have a vested interest in. Um, thanks for ending the show on a lit litigious note, Michelle. You're welcome. So see you guys all at the end of the month over at Monthly Spooky. Thank you again so much. And Michelle, thank you for, for sitting down with me over a hundred times and uh, just shooting the shit. Yeah, thank thank you for having me. I almost bought that. 